Welcome, everybody, to a Local Chat. Sorry, I was a little hot coming in there. Episode number six. I'm your host, William Crosby. Joining me today is a man who thinks frogs are made of beans. Ian Gibson, how are you? Good. And I tell you what, I looked it up. It's actually pinto beans. That's insane. Also joining me is a man who believes pirates did good things. Chris Elliott. And unfortunately, Masahiro Sakai will not add Goofy to Smash. He's a coward. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, three three seconds in, you hit us with the goofy. <laughs> if I get it done early, I can just oh. not talk about it. <laughs> I'm you just, just with this terrible brand. Oh, I hate your brand. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, hi, Bliss Prophecy. How is it going? Um, folks, we're here to talk about video games. We're here to talk about video game news. I was just saying in our little pre-show that it was completely silent because we. All we want to talk about is video games, and we can't because we have to save it for this dumb show that we started. <laughs> it was a mistake. Um, yeah, quite a week. Uh, we'll start off with uh, what I like to call when I pull up the screen and I'm able to change it. What you playing? I'm going to throw a little oddball here as my phone goes <laughs> off to tell me that YouTube, we're live, guys. I don't know if you know that. So oh, wow. Live yeah. on YouTube? Wow. Crazy. Uh, Crazy. Chris, I'm going to start with you. What have you been Hello. playing, my friend? Um, I have been playing a lot of Apex Legends season, whatever season we're on, colon oh. mayhem. Uh, hey, Apex Legends kicks ass. I don't want to tell you. As it's still good. Like, yeah. Battle Royales, by and large, I don't love. I do really like Apex, though. I think it's the per I think it's the... We've spoken about this before, where uh, PUBG sort of set the groundwork. Fortnite improved on that and commercialized it. And then Apex Legends is like... Let's just take it. Let's just make a really solid game with this format. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's I think, exactly I think they also like smoothed over a lot of the pain points, like the whole ping system yes. and not having fall damage, stuff like that. Just, I will say the, the ping system in that game is probably one of the most underrated revolutions to multiplayer yep. game design in years. And the respawn system. I believe they were the first to have the, the yeah. pickup tags and respawn. Yeah. yeah, and then every, you know, everything, every one of their grandmother was like, hey, what if we just jacked that? Because <laughs> yeah. uh, battle royales are inherently not fun, but what if we took things that made them fun? What a concept. Um, yeah, that, that that's really great. Uh, also, I highly recommend watching the trailer for the new season Mayhem. I showed it to Willie at work. Um, it's all, like, done, like, an 80s uh, action movie promo, and it's very good. <laughs> it even starts that in 4x3 great. and then expands out. And, oh, it's great um yeah that's great uh yakuza 7 like a dragon victoria and i finally beat that very long game i meant to check our hour count i think it was somewhere around 60 hours which actually isn't terrible for a jrpg but it's still quite long um but we also did a ton of side content we did most of the mini games to completion which you don't need um that that might have the best last hour in a video game i've ever played um oh it wow. is the the final two boss fights and then all the cutscenes, and then the, the final cutscene is i can't remember the last time I, i've uh openly gasped and dropped a controller <laughs> because of something so shocking happened on on the screen uh wow yeah i i gasped dropped the controller, went, are you kidding me uh and then the post credit scene brought victoria to tears because it was so good <laughs> um that game kicks ass if you like your rpgs even a little bit you owe it to yourself to play yakuza 7 like a dragon great game yeah and I would say, if you don't like JRPGs, just play Yakuza 0. It's the same game, just not yeah. a JRPG. <laughs> if you like punching shit, uh, the, like, the Yakuza writing team has mastered, like, our main story is going to be so deadly serious, and everything else is the most balls-to-the-wall ridiculous, like, a bunch of sumos getting out of a limousine and curb stomping a dude and sprinting off into the night levels yeah. of, like, just in insane lunacy. Oh, it's so good. Um, also been playing Grindstone, uh, which is now available on Switch because it was only available on Apple, Arc Apple Arcade prior to that. Uh, love Cappy Games. Grindstone's fun. I wish it was on my friggin' Google phone, but Apple Arcade is a menace to society. Uh, exclusivity <laughs> is pure evil. Uh, we also played the Pokemon Sword and Shield Crown Tundra DLC. Look, I know too much about Pokemon. I made a terrible video about eating them. Um, I, you don't need to play this. If you want to, you do. Um... I am thoroughly let down by both of the DLCs for that game and that game in general. Are you let down? Oh, Oof. man, you stole my follow up. That game, like, <clears throat> I feel like is the quintessential testament of fans will buy anything with the Pokemon or with a brand name on it from a good brand. 
So that- like pr- Prime Sword and Shield isn't terrible. It just misses the mark is the thing. Like like it, it's 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 so close to being able to be recovered that I think mm-hmm. it could end up being fine. But then the DLCs make me go, mm, maybe not. I um I just I'm sorry, Will. So your statement was that <laughs> I, I, I didn't get sword, it out. All about, shut up. Shut up. About Sword and Shield just because it said Pokemon on it. What no, content? I mean like people will forgive it a lot more because it's a Pokemon game, and they're like they always have to buy the next Pokemon game. I don't know. I feel like Sword and Shield got a lot of guff from it pretty did, much everybody, but it still sold like gangbusters. Yeah, because yeah, that's true. Because Pokemon's the most valuable franchise that exists. Period. Yeah, yeah. which is but bad. I, would, I would say Sword and Shield at least is a game. It's not like some. It's not like Mario Run, which is just some weird monetization. That's true. Of of yeah. you know an idea but it was not yeah, I mean, it was absolutely wasn't the revolution it should have been for the switch that's also true yeah it's it yeah, looks it like a 3ds game it it, it didn't come it didn't come out and everyone goes okay this is the future of pokemon it yeah. came out and everyone went "Ooh, okay yeah. that was um pokemon let's go that was the game that had that reaction <laughs> <laughs> which i i think that's just like if the next pokemon for switch is still like that 3ds era crap then it's kind of like they're not learning anything i but, I, I i have faith they will manage to build something out of this yeah because when this before this came out i was like oh maybe i'll get into pokemon finally and then no i mean i played a majority of pokemon let's go eevee and i never played red and blue mm-hmm. and that game is really good it holds up they've made a lot of really good quality of life improvements to it so honestly i wish they would just go that direction that they would make a pokemon let's go to but a brand new game instead of remaking the previous one also the buying two games I, I i've never liked that that, that that's it's, it's, it's you, such can, a, you can it's, ignore that though. it's such a thing of a bygone era it's like so uh yeah i don't know uh I mean, it's the gimmick of trading which is just so old. it's link cables baby love zelda uh <laughs> Chris, is that everything you've been playing? And it's all the video games I've been playing. Well, League of Legends, but nobody cares. Yeah, w- honestly. Who not care less? Yeah, does. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, what have you been playing? I'm sorry, before we leave League of Legends, I just want to say uh, you should go find my Twitter account at ThinkGibson because I posted a very funny picture, which is true, of somebody playing. I don't, I can't, I'm not sure which MOBA it was. They were in a match, and somebody came in the match and said, Hi, I'm your jungler. This is what you need to know. And then they posted a link to a very well-made infographic, which was all the rules of how to play with this <laughs> jungler, and saying things like, If you say this chat phrase, I will ban you and mute you and not help you for the rest of the match. This is amazing. <laughs> Here, here's a crappy it's, phone grab of it for you guys watching. Um, it is like the perfect, league, the the perfect encapsulation of everything <laughs> wrong with MOBAs is that it encourages people to act like that in the game. And yeah. it's just like, oh god, wow, this is insane. This is this, a, a, a psychopath yeah. made this, just um, like passive aggressive stuff. But it's yes, crazy. this is League of Legends, and yes, uh, it is the most toxic community that exists, except possibly Overwatch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyways, um, I haven't been playing too much this week. Um, I played uh, a little indie game that's on Xbox Game Pass called Wilmot's Warehouse. That's uh, W I L M O T. Um, it's kind of fun. It's like a very minimalistic top-down like logistics game where basically you're in a warehouse and every morning a delivery comes and dumps like let's say 25 boxes and each of the boxes has an icon on them and they're kind of like minimalistic uh colored icons so you look at one you go oh that's a that's like a nuclear bomb going off that's uh that's a uh looks like a microphone that looks like a gear and then you put them somewhere in the warehouse you have like a timer to put them somewhere in the warehouse and then once the timer ticks down, it's usually like two, two and a half minutes. Um, this uh, counter opens up and three people show up and they're like, I want two microphones and a gear. And you have to go around the warehouse and find those items that you put that you stored in the warehouse somewhere and then deliver it to them. And how quickly you deliver it gets you stars, which you can use to upgrade your speed and stuff. It sounds like a very simple game, but it's just so well done, so well presented. It's so very minimal. It's the warehouse is all black with white lines representing walls and then just big empty space. So you're just grabbing these colored boxes and putting them and you can carry multiple of them at a time. And then you have to like develop the system where you're like, okay, I'm going to put all the blue boxes over here and put the green boxes over here. And it, it, it ramps up 
and it gets crazier and crazier. And all of a sudden you're getting a delivery of 40 boxes that you have to sort out. And every round they're adding new items. So at the beginning, there's only like five different item types. By the end, there's like a hundred different item types. Jeez. Anyways, just a crazy, beautiful little indie game. I love it because it's such a simple mechanic when you think about it, where you're just storing items in a warehouse and then filling orders. But they aced it with how they roll out that mechanic and the aesthetics of it. It's just a beautiful, beautiful game. Have either of you guys played this game or seen it? I, I pulled it up as you were talking about it. I actually have seen this on Twitter. Um, I didn't really understand how the game worked to you explain it just now. Uh, and I can say I like the concept. I like the aesthetic. I like the simplicity of it. This would give me actual fucking nightmares. So, <laughs> no. No. You know, honestly, I, I, I thought the same thing, but it ramps up so slowly that it's easy to manage it. Because okay. I'm right there with you where I would be like panicking, but I, I was able to handle it pretty well. Um, I also finished the story of Hitman 3. I finished the last two levels. Nice. Um, story goes some places, but it also kind of wraps up in a weird way. I'm not going to spoil it. The last mission is interesting. They do some really interesting stuff there, but it's not quite up to the snuff of the other levels. Um, but overall, Hitman 3, like we said before, if you like Hitman, play Hitman 3. Um, if you can get the weird software linking to work, then Hitman 3 is all three Hitman packages in a single thing with carry-through, cross-through progression. Um, I wish they made it a little bit easier, but if you can get it working, it's fantastic that you can basically have the entire World of Assassination trilogy at your fingertips in a single package. Um, is that what they call it? The World of Assassination trilogy? Yeah. In That's not a, that is not a good name. I don't, I don't think they say World of Assassination trilogy, but they say it's the World of Assassination. And it's so tongue in cheek. It's that was the tagline for the first game. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, is it? Okay. That's that's better. Um, but Will, you also finished Hitman 3, right? Are you kind of yeah. on the same page with me about what did you think about that last level? I, I liked the last level a lot for very particular reasons. Uh, that I won't go in, get into because it'd be a spoiler. But also the reveal of that last level is incredible. Um, yes. But I, I agree. It is. I've gone back and played that level a couple times doing stuff. And it's, I wish, like, my brain can think of tons of ways. Like, I want to send an email to IO, be like, hey, turn this into this, turn this into this, turn, like, put a murder mystery there, make it different, add things to it. But the way yeah. it is right now, it's not very replayable because it's super linear. Um, yeah. There are some some points where you could, like, go different ways on it, but, yeah, it's it's too linear. Like, I wish there was another level that led up to it, and, like, that was the ending of another level. Um, yeah, I could see that. But that would be uh, interesting. Like that's like that's your getaway from a level. Yeah. But all of a sudden it turns into that. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. Uh, which I guess it kind of is the getaway from the level before it, but not in that sense. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, I I really love Hitman Three. And like you said, if you have them all together, which the way I finally got Hitman One to be in my Hitman Three was I had to install the Hitman th One access pass from my phone. Because there was no option oh. on the Xbox to install it. Wow! <laughs> and it finally worked. Now that you've uh, now that you've both beaten Hitman Three, does that make you more or less an anticipating of? So I, I interacted because Hitman is now making that 007 James Bond game. Are are you more inclined to be excited for that now that you've played Hitman Three? Um, I I think so. I, there was a detail that came out since we last talked about this that this is a different James Bond and it's a unique story. Yeah. So that that makes me think that they don't have Hollywood riding their back, dictating what they can and can't do. Mm -hmm. um, and that makes me I think I think their James Bond game is only going to be good if they approached it like they did with Hitman, where they basically said, you know, what is the core of the series and how can we improve that? And that was a lot of open areas, et cetera. And so with James Bond, I think if they approached it with that same level of creativity, even if it ends up being completely different from Hitman. I'm still excited for it. They, they've shown that they can come up with some crazy stuff and make it work again and again and again. Yeah, and, and they've made they've made Hitman work with a deadpan character who has absolutely no charisma and is yeah. in like this weird world where everyone believes he's another person despite looking yeah. the same. Uh, and I think with a character with a little bit more charisma and a little bit more character, they can kind of up those scenes a lot more 
and even like I, I could almost imagine at bare bones like a hitman with like a sort of persuasion thing in it like you walk up to someone and be like oh mm-hmm. hey follow me this way instead of coining them you're like having them follow Persuade you but yeah, um, smooth talking smooth talker um, um I, I could cool. also see we talked about how linear that last level of hitman 3 is i think my my concern earlier was that they they would have to make a linear game or not have to make a linear game but they would make a game that's less open and inviting than this hitman but having played the very linear final level of hitman 3 they still did that level really well mm-hmm. and so i'm like if i played a james bond game and it was just those levels i would still enjoy it i wouldn't think it was amazing yeah but it would not be some ho-hum boring linear hollywood game like marvel's avengers by square enix you know i i, <laughs> I know they can knock it out of the park even if they don't get terribly creative with it yeah marvel's avengers a square enix joint uh, what a terrible game just got <laughs> awful uh <laughs> i didn't play it uh last game i've been playing uh i finally dove in i've been putting it off for a while is satisfactory Yay. Um, yeah yeah it's 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 Put pretty it good me. it took me a while to get used to it uh so for those of you at home this is basically a, an engine building factory building game where you are you know building you know you're crafting iron plates you're mining iron you're making iron plates and then using that to make batteries and then you can set up a whole automation stream and conveyor belts and pipelines and factories etc um it took a while for me to get used to it not being factorio or dyson sphere program and by that i mean it's very different in first person because it's very hard to get a macro level idea of what's going on when you're just surrounded by machines and you're having to run between them all the time but i think i've finally gotten used to it i got about seven hours in i got my main bus up and flowing it's pretty good I, I think I think it it offers enough unique things that I still think first person is a detriment to that genre, but they offer enough interesting stuff and they do it creatively enough that it's worth playing. What about you guys? It sounds like both of you have have experience with this game. Uh, so I got into this thing very early access. I haven't played it in almost mm-hmm. probably almost a year now. Um, I, I really enjoyed it, like top to bottom. See, I I understand the like limitation of the first person thing, but I feel like that's that's part of it is they kind of want you to feel lost and like almost like you're mismanaging so then you can tear down and rebuild. Uh, I also think this game does a really good job of working with the openness and verticality of things. Like you can build crap wherever you want, really. Yeah. Uh, And that's really cool. I I do feel like that. I mean, the biggest detriment of this game is that multiplayer doesn't really work. Yeah. Yeah, we we the reason why I'm playing it now is I have been putting it off because we wanted to play it as part of Sandbox or the Sandbox, which is our series where we play cooperative multiplayer survival crafting building games. Um, but Satisfactory doesn't have a dedicated server yet. We knew with this game, we really needed a dedicated server so we can play offline hours in between streams as opposed to having, you know, 50 stream episodes just for this one game. They still don't have it, but I realized I should probably learn how to play the game before we actually do the stream. That's kind of why I'm hopping in. So. I really hope they fix the multiplayer soon and they add dedicated servers because daddy wants to play with Will Boy <gasps> and maybe even Zach, maybe even Chris, if you want to join. I want to stream this game. I want to have a big giant multiplayer server going. They really got to add some and dedicated servers. I think also to expand on the first person stuff, I think having it in first person makes you f- like when you're playing with other people, you feel like you're each working on your own things where mm-hmm, the trap yeah. we kept falling into with the Factorio thing is like, Oh, it slowly becomes one person's vision and it's hard to like figure that stuff out from like, um, because yeah. everyone's looking at it from a macro view versus now it's like, Hey, you can kind of go off and do your own thing and you can't see what the other player's doing. You're, you have to go over there to see what they're doing versus Factorio. Mm-hmm. You can just zoom out and zoom into where they are. So I and think that all help. requires you to have like multiple, like, like this is the iron town. Oh, we have to go yeah. way over there for petrol. Yeah, mm-hmm. it really scales it up. So it's like, oh, Will's over there working on hydroelectric. Hey, why is the power down? What are you doing? Like, that sort of yeah. stuff is, is a lot easier. That's a good point. So I'm looking forward to that if they ever add freaking dedicated on servers. The, uh, on the sandbox, you guys played Dyson Sphere program that was like two weeks ago, right? Um, uh, yeah, but that wasn't sandbox. That was just a solo stream. Oh, gotcha. Did you, did you enjoy that more or less than Satisfactory, you would say? I would say more just because it has the top-down view. Um, okay. But it's it's still very it's very similar to factorio but it doesn't quite have its later tech trees fleshed out mm. so i would i would wait on it um well i would either play it now wait a bit and then come back to it 
or if you really want to have some of that higher tier stuff. I think I put like 12 hours into my save and I reached a point where I was like, they haven't really fleshed out these higher tech tiers. So I'm going to back off it for a while. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I, again, the answer is always play Factorio. It's the best of the three by far. Um, it's, it's just amazing. Satisfactory is second and Dyson Sphere program right now is third, but it could pop up to second once they figure out those later tech trees, just because I, like I said, I still prefer the, uh, the macro view. Right. Awesome. That's everything you've been playing, sweet boy? Yep, that's it. Nice. Okay. What have I been playing? Other than Usuals, which is Last of Us Part 2 and Hitman 3 and Monster Hunter World, which Monster Hunter World, I'm looking at you because I had to fight stupid Leg Legiana four times to get my Frost Sacks so I could make a Glacial Bow. And I got my frost sacks, and then when I went to make it, I had used all the claws to make ice armor. So now I gotta go oh. hunt Legiana again. But the nice thing <laughs> is, is I was trying to get one frost sack, but I got eight frost sacks. So uh, now I just gotta go kill. Uh, best part is I've gotten really good at killing Legiana, so that that's that's at least a benefit. And now the ice hurt. Her or his ice attacks don't affect me. That's great. Uh, so I've been playing those. Um, but like a lost Ian the past couple weeks, I have been searching for a new game to play. Uh, and I started my little journey with something I like to call where is it? Oxygen not included. I purchased this on Steam and I started playing it. And I was about 15 minutes in when my brain said, No. <laughs> And I went back to Steam and I refunded it and they gave me my hey. money back. The hey, system look, it's, works. It's Fallout Shelter. So um, Chris knows a little bit about this. Uh, well, Ian knows about this too, to an extent. I love colony management stuff. Always have, yes. always will. Um, but recently I have had a idea fester in my brain for a... I, I wouldn't say for a video. I mean, I would say for a video game, it's not like I'm going to make it anytime soon, but I'm like trying to write the details down while I'm thinking about it. And so I wrote a big inspiration list of games. And so now I'm trying to play through those games to kind of like get some mechanic ideas and like throw it on the list and like slowly acquire that sort of stuff. So number one on that list was uh, Frostpunk. Uh huh. And I started Frostpunk, and boy, guys, Frostpunk is a great game. Um, you're all these settlers, and you go north, and you find this giant generator that had been built before the storms came, and you move in, and then you turn it on, and you just start building your city out, and it's in this ring, and it's very well built where you can like add the buildings on the ring and like kind of map it out. So I got like three hours in on two saves, and I rarely do this in the game, but my brain's like, I can do this better. And I like went and restarted and like immediately started like getting everything. Like, like, oh, I'll build my little village center over here and everything. So I, I got to, I, I, I would say I essentially beat the main story mission. Um, cause you just have to mm -hmm. survive long enough. And then you hit this big storm that you're supposed to usually like wipes out your people, but I didn't enjoy that part of the game. So I just, had my people die and i was like you know what let's just call it beat so then i went and bought the <laughs> dlc um no like you're I'm not sorry, wait a minute you're like i beat the story mission <laughs> by losing deliberately but you're like uh -uh. You're, i was reading up on it you're like not supposed to survive it it's like a it's like they're it's it's their like end game. Th like you're just supposed to see how far your score gets like through. Gotcha. It, gotcha. Or it's whatever. just the way you phrased it. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. I yeah. won by turning off the game. Take that. <laughs> Hideo Kojima. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, best form of safe sex is not having sex. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I went and bought the DLC cause I was, Thanks, they had like Shigeru these, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, they had these other uh, modes on it. So I went and bought, the, so now I'm like playing this mission where you're in the autumn and you're actually they actually added all this new stuff so you're building the generator that your people then go to later in the main mission so it's like a prequel mm -hmm. thing and you're in the autumn and all this stuff um, other cool aspect of the game is there's like morality and uh, hope and um, just descent 
um, and you write laws. So like there's law spider web. So like the first thing I did in my main mission was like, I, I didn't allow child labor. I put children in shelters, Ugh. but later on in that branch, Ooh. because I didn't put them into child labor, I could then have children help out at the hospitals or the engineering places. Huh. But if I had done child oh, labor, child I couldn't. Labor. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Essentially. Like child labor, but okay, uh, sure. <laughs> it's called an internship. <laughs> unpaid so then like my first uh game i ended up signing all these laws that basically founded a new religion and i became the like god of the religion and then wow. i made my people too angry so they they put me on the executioner's block and that's how i lost the game <laughs> which wow. the executioner's block is the steam exhaust of the generator that like cooks the people alive which is an awesome oh, bit. Oh, wait. What's that? Oh, sorry. I'm getting up to here. Uh, that's rad. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, uh, Frostpunk's really good. Uh, I've been having a blast play it, uh, playing it. I'm, I'm going to go back to it some more, but it's definitely on the list of, I'm like slowly moving this through this list. Uh, another game, I would say game series or developer on that list is uh, the people who make the Sunless Sea and the, Sunless fall sea? better fall sorry fall beater games fall beater games is it fall in london sunless sunless sea and sunless skies it is both sunless okay so fall in london is their text-based game that's in a browser that like leads up to the world like gets you introduced to the world so i'm playing that a bit mm -hmm. um sort of like another like steampunky kind of weird british vibes um pip pip cheerio the Z, Eldritch Horror. Eldritch Horror, all that sort of stuff. So I've been playing this a little bit. I was I wanted to prime myself for playing Sunless Sea, um, which I heard is really great. I know Chris, you've played it. I adore um, that game. I have like hundred, I have like two hundred hours in that game or something ridiculous. Yeah, so I, I'm planning on playing that, uh, but I just kind of want to get the like little primer before jumping in. Um, so there's that. Uh, still playing Chrono Trigger. We did two streams this week. That game's really good. I'm getting a like, I'm getting an itch. That I cannot scratch. Uh, I just want to play JRPGs now, which is a very yeah, bad thing. I got him. I got I, him. I'm already looking forward to season two, even though we haven't even finished season one. And <laughs> I've, I've, Ian knows my Dwarf Fortress obsession before I played Dwarf Fortress. Um, I've sort of had that started with Dragon Quest, and I don't know why, <laughs> but I just want to play mm -hmm. Dragon Quest stuff. But I haven't made the jump to uh, play a Dragon Quest game actual dragon quest game yet so i've resorted to the mobile game dragon quest tact which isn't very good but i'm still <laughs> enjoying it mostly because I, I named my character trash can and they keep saying it and it's very funny uh um, sorry will what are what are the names we have in chrono trigger by the way we'll, oh sorry in chrono trigger we got horse we've got For sweat For we've got Marl. c3po luca tongu Toad, or sorry, frog, and feces, Furobo. <laughs> and I think there's feet. one more character, which the naming we, we, we got feet saved, feet stank, sniff, sniff. I think is pretty good. Rub, um, I thought of that earlier. Rub's not bad. Rubbo would have been good. Um, <laughs> Rubbo. Anyways, Dragon Quest Tact. It's kind of like a tactics game, so you're like moving the people around. Um, every time I do a mission, it says, warning, we have to download the cutscene or data or whatever. Please be on Wi-Fi. And it's like eight megabytes. And I'm like, what is this <laughs> mobile game that I need to use up my data for? It also takes forever to load. Um, but I don't know. I did a bunch of research today about playing Dragon Quest. And they're like, there's the people who are like, gotta play it in order. And then there's the people who are like, it's like Final Fantasy. You can play whichever one you want um so i'm still trying to decide which one i'm going to start that's going to splinter off of jrpgs I, i'm going to kind of play them because i figured i they're too long to do a stream series with um some of them yeah, yeah. dragon quest one is nine hours to beat so i think that's a contender for like playing on stream versus like dragon quest 10 the loose of age is like 65 hours or 11 yeah so i'm like oh, i'll just play that that game own. is crazy long and then the post game is crazy long and nothing but grind yeah so i might yeah. start with like eight or something i don't know I, i'm kind of like anything under 30 is good to stream anything over 30 is like oh um anyways that's 
that's pretty much all I've been playing. Not much else. Um, I dabbled in some RimWorld stuff. I downloaded the uh, the Save Our Ships 2 mod, which you in the end game you get to build a ship and then just fly to a different planet. Um, and that's going to be... I'm going to work up to the end game again to kind of get that going. So if no one else has any other games to talk about... That means it's time. It's nine thirty already. Jeez, we talked for too long. Uh, it's time for the news. I don't have a news stinger this week. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I, I guess I did have a stinger this week. It just played. They call uh, Ian Pipes Gibson for something. That's true. <laughs> it's not that. Um. <laughs> Moving into the news, uh, we've got a lot on here. So I'm just because you two are seasoned veterans and we don't have a dumb guest like Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> I'll just let you choose whatever you want to talk about. Um, so e- who wants to go first? Anyone? Anyone? Go ahead. <laughs> um. All right. I want to talk about Six Days in Fallujah. So do you guys remember Six Days in Fallujah when it was announced in 2009? I, I knew it was a thing that was canceled. That's all I knew about this game. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to try and do a quick time based off these. Uh, I have some of the original articles up. So the game was announced on April 6, 2009 in an LA Times article. Um, so this is basically a Konami published Atomic Games developed game called Six Days in Fallujah, where they were working with uh, Marines who took place in the battle in Fallujah to uh, basically create a video game based on it. Um, it came under a lot of fallout and on April, I'm sorry, let me, uh, I want to say within a week or two, I don't have an exact date here. Konami pulled out and they said, we're not going to publish this game. Gross. The studio then basically closed down within a year or two because of the backlash from this game, losing their publisher, et cetera. Um, long story short, the game is back. It's crazy. This is like one of, this is like scale bound. This is like, what are some other (laughs) popular games that were canceled? Like, I don't want to say inexplicably, but like surprisingly canceled. Um, Uh, Elden Ring, not yet. (laughs) (laughs) Skull and Bones. (laughs) Oh, Skull and Bones. How dare you? (laughs) <laughs> that's a multimedia project that's gonna change the world <laughs> um yeah it's just the reason why i wanted to bring this up is uh guys it's just <laughs> what is the reason ian i'm very very frustrated about this and i can tell neither of you give a gosh darn crap so i'm gonna try and keep it bottled up a little bit here i i don't know i don't know what you're mad about yet you haven't inf- i you haven't told me yeah tell us so about the war crimes the- they announced the game in 2009. Tell us. There's all this backlash by the public. I'll read a quote here. Um, quote, considering the enormous loss of life in the Iraq war, glorifying it in a video game demonstrates very poor judgment and bad taste, according to Reg Keys, whose son Thomas was killed by a mob in Iraq while serving as a military policeman. Quote, it is particularly crass when you consider what actually happened in Fallujah. These horrific events should be confined to the annals of history, not trivialized and rendered for thrill seekers to play out over and over again forever more. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to end there, but I got a little stinger. Even worse, it could end up in the hands of a fanatical young Muslim and incite him to consider some form of retaliation or retribution. He could use it to get worked up and want to really finish the game. So basically... The game got Sorry, canceled in... What two- year was that written in? 2009. Man, <laughs> late 2000s sensationalized media. What <laughs> the fuck, dog? All right, I'm so, going up your the goal. media. That was, that, was, uh, that was somebody whose son was killed in Iraq and is understandably upset. Oh, that was the quote. Okay, I understand. That was the quote, yes. So, and then there's another guy who says, I will be calling for this game to be banned, if not worldwide, then certainly in the UK. So basically, the concern back in 2009 was that they were making a game that was glorifying uh, horrible events in human history. That the idea was they were turning it into some court sort of arcadey shooter. This very realistic event that is arguably the worst uh, U.S. involved close quarters battle since 1968, which would I believe was uh, Quezon and the Vietnam War. 
so they they basically got so much pressure from the media and from the public that they canceled the game. Well, the, they were forced to stop working on the game by their publisher and go out of business. And now all these years later, the people who were originally part of that studio, along with uh, such great people as Marty O'Donnell, um, who does the uh, audio director of Halo, excuse me, and Destiny, they're bringing the game back. Uh, according to them, the game was never actually canceled by them. It was just shelved for a very long time until they could get back to it. And they're bringing the game back and they're going to publish it in 2021. And guess what, folks? It's still very controversial. Um, there are people all over Twitter. I'm not going to call them out because I can't afford that kind of heat. Jeff Bezos. Um, <laughs> there's people all over Twitter who are saying that this game should not be made because the Iraq war was illegal, war crimes, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I just, <laughs> does that mean we can never have a video game about it? It's like, why are you treating video games as such a childish medium that they don't, that you don't think that it can handle such serious events properly? You know, yeah. I'm not saying that it's going to be apolitical. I'm not saying that I'm going to agree with their take on it, but I think they are capable of handling it and they should be applauded for attempting to handle hmm. such a serious topic. You know, yeah. you can't be a fan of video games on the one hand and then accuse a video game of you can, and then and then and then castrate a video game for approaching a serious topic by assuming that it's going to treat it lightly or treat it as if it's a, as if it's something for an arcade. And I think that's a lot to do with like video game the word or phrase brings a lot of connotation. Mm -hmm. Like if you told me, hey, there's this Holocaust movie coming out, you're like, oh, Holocaust. Or like, hey, there's this Holocaust video game coming out. Like yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Yes. that's needs a qualifier of like, hey, there's a Holocaust video game coming out that's a walking sim. It's like a museum piece. Like you need to qualify that versus like yeah. a movie or an art piece or anything like that you don't. So I think that's, yeah. that's a huge barrier for a lot of people. Who... I, I never played the close combat games, which is the, the franchise that this, team had made prior are is is it the kind of thing that can handle that kind of level of introspection and like you know carrying a story or is this is this very much a, a gung-ho fuck yeah we get to shoot stuff because if so i mean i i would be more, more on the lines of like you probably shouldn't do this considering the second battle of fallujah is one of the major examples of committing war crimes against civilians that we all lived through yeah so let me um let me read some quotes from the atomic games president um, well, let me set it up. So basically, th this the studio, this development studio, was making military simulators for the U.S. military. So they were making like CQB tactical simulators, etc. Basically, like quote unquote video games, but that are used as training tools by the military. Mm -hmm. And uh, so while they were making these, I believe in like 2005 ish, the military sent over several Marines to the studio to be consultants, to basically say, you know, hey, you're, you're holding the M16 wrong. You wouldn't reload like that. This is how they would actually clear a room, et cetera, et cetera. Um, again, not as part of a game, just as part of a military simulator. Those Marines then got shipped out to Iraq as part of their unit and took part in the battle in Fallujah. And when they came back, they went back to the studio and they said, hey, we saw some real messed up stuff over there and we don't know how to process it. And we think the best way to do that is to work with you guys to make a video game based on our experience. Okay. And, and like, I'll, I'll read you a quote right here. This is from the uh, president of the studio from 2009. Ultimately, all of us are curious about what it would really be like in a war. I've been playing military shooters for ages. And at a certain point when I'm playing the game, I know it's fake. You can tell a bunch of guys sat in a room and designed it. That's always bothered me. There are things that you can do in video games that you cannot do in other forms of media. And a lot of that has to do with presenting players with the dilemmas that the Marines saw in Fallujah and then giving them the choice of how to handle that dilemma. And I think at that point, you know, when you watch a movie, you see the decisions that somebody else made. But when you make a decision yourself, then you get a much deeper level of understanding. And it's like that, that quote was from 2009 and the media and, and the general populace took it they just ignored the quote they probably didn't even see it they just assumed it was a kiddie video game yeah and i'll read you a quote from the exact same guy from today's press release about six days in fallujah today or yesterday i can't remember when it was announced i think it was this morning i think it was, it was this morning. Morning. quote it's hard to understand what combat is actually like through fake people doing fake things in fake places this generation showed sacrifice and courage in iraq as remarkable as any in history 
And now they're offering the rest of us a new way to understand one of the most important events of our century. It's time to challenge outdated stereotypes about what video games can be. It's like, like I, I feel like the studio is approaching the game. First of all, it wasn't their idea. It was literally the people who were in the Battle of Fallujah who have difficulty handling what they saw and what they went through. And they were approached, they approached the studio to help them go through it. They're going through the creative process to help them deal with struggles in their life. And then the developers have picked it up and they're doing everything right so far. You know, they, they're, they're interviewing um, Marines who were in the battle as well as civilians who were, who, who were uh, unfortunately caught in the crossfire. They're including those interviews as documentary snippets in the game, you know, like a brother, like a episode of Band of Brothers. Mm -hmm. They're trying to base it as close to reality as possible. So some of the Marines that interview are characters in the game and they're recreating actual events that they went through. They're trying to take it as seriously as possible and all the media can focus on, especially like, like very highfalutin, respectable individuals of the game's media are acting like this game does not deserve to be made because all it's going to do is treat it as an arcade shooter. And it's like, how can you, how can you claim to be a fan of the medium and at the same time expect so little of its developers and creators and at the same time confine them? And not allow them to talk about serious things. I'm going off here. It's yeah, just so upsetting. I mean, I, also, like, if it came out and it was all of that, then 100% like slam into those people. Like, hey, you're glorifying yeah. this, you're glorifying that, blah, blah, blah. But if it comes out and it's like some great art piece or like handles a thing yeah. really, really well, like, then you can be like, that's the time that you can like freak out about this. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's and, crazy. I, and I think this, this will tread the line of, either coming out and being some sensationalist sensationalist piece of propaganda or um, something like that is actually subversive and handles the topic well, like Spec Ops line, which doesn't handle handle things perfectly, but handles stuff pretty damn yeah. well and is a good representation of, I mean, it's, it's a good representation of hard darkness, but uh, in a in a very well done setting and talking about, you know, the modern geopolitical uh, military presence, well, I mean, not modern anymore, but, you know, uh, of the Middle East, ah, still modern, whatever, Neo neocolonialism is a nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I think I think it, what really upset me about this is that this is somebody, this is a group of people who love the medium of video games, and they want to push it forward. They don't want to make another generic shooter. They don't want to have Reagan in cutscenes saying, "Well, of course we do illegal things," you know. They don't want to make another. Uh, real. <laughs> they don't want to make another stupid like mobile loot box, uh, horribly monetized game. They're they're saying we think video games can be better. And we're going to source material to accurately represent it as much as we can. You know, and I guarantee you, yes, they're going to be coming at it from an American aspect. So, of course, they're going to be painting the insurgents as bad guys, probably. It's, it's not going to be 100% kosher. You know, they're definitely going to put some of their slant on it. That's just the, that's, that's how art works. But I think they should be applauded for trying to push the medium beyond by tackling this tough subject. And from everything I can tell so far, looking at their history looking at the quotes that are coming out, looking at the trailer that came out, which was half the trailer was just interviews with Marines who were in Fallujah. They're, they're handling it well. So it is just absolutely infuriating to me that when something good is happening in the medium that I love, in video games, people at the top of the video game industry are shitting on them. Pisses me off. Yeah. Rightfully so, I think. Sure. I swear to God, if this game is bad, after I just ranted about it, I'm going to be even more pissed. <laughs> what happens if it gets canceled again? Oh, God. I what if would, Ian I would gets canceled? It. You're going to have to rebrand. Don't cancel me. Cancel me for that rant. Do it. I dare you. <laughs> we'll be I'm safe scared, slots guys. from now on. I'm scared. <laughs> um, Anyways. Uh, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Um, yeah. That's... But real talk, though. I, there is a little snippet of gameplay in the trailer. And they actually are like doing kind of the Band of Brothers feel where they're very, they're sticking very close to real life events and having, like I said, those real life interviews. I feel like this could, this could be a very, very good video game. Um, so I definitely have my hopes what, up for it. What else have they made? I this don't the, know. The Close Quarters. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, a, game, a game series I've never played. I, I mean, I assume it's a top down 2D, like, like wave clear, like room shooter. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, but you this got is um, nickels and dimes coming at you, and you're close. Yeah. I believe they said this is a tactical shooter, so it's probably first person. They also said that they they're making it like a survival horror game, 
not in that there's jump scares or anything, but just the, the, the resources. No, no, not even that. Just that close quarters combat. You know, every doorway behind every doorway could be an enemy. So every single room you got to clear, because that was the whole thing about Fallujah was that they had to go house to house, room yeah. to room, door to door. And they would end up like there's um there's a house. I believe it's called the Kill House in Fallujah. And it's infamous because there was like three or four Marines that died in this house. And it's because um, essentially the insurgents had set up an ambush in this house and the Marines, like the first team goes in and they get shot and they have to like hide in a, in a bathroom. And the second team goes in to try and get them and they get shot. So you just have this, like this just bloody bleeding dead Marines trapped in a house. They can't call in artillery because it's too close to where they currently are. They can't call in airstrikes. They can't bring in tanks or anything. And they just have to go into this house and clear it. And that's the kind of survival horror they're talking about. It's just that that absolute fear of close quarters combat. Yeah. And that that could that could be a fantastic game. Yeah. Hundred percent. Wow. Um, awesome. Thank you, Ian, for your presentation class. <laughs> uh, I, say, I, I went to school to be a Middle Eastern journalist at one point in my life. We cannot talk about this for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never stop. We'll never shut up. Yeah. Yeah, I know nothing about the Middle East. It's just it's like that's where hobbits are from, right? Anyways, moving on. Um, are you calling me a hobbit? <laughs> zero, zero you're from the Middle East. On that joke, <laughs> I'd live there for four years. So <laughs> you're not from there. They'll never accept you, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Just like your wife. Um, <laughs> oh, Chris, boy. is there anything you want to talk about? Oh crap! Okay. I mean, I can okay. go. I have something. So. Uh, no, I got one. Let's talk about something completely lighthearted and as far away from that as humanly possible. Let's make fun of Kingdom Hearts, baby. <laughs> oh my god. Um, oh my god. So uh I, I don't know what you guys I, I know Will's relationship with Kingdom Hearts. Uh Ian, thoughts on Kingdom Hearts in general? I played 10 hours of Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh it was god awful. It wasn't even good enough to be like funny because I was originally gonna do something for Subpixel for it. And I regret pretty much all of those hours. <laughs> and I am just confounded. I, I actually did an entire video talking about how people shouldn't like Kingdom Hearts and they only really like it because it just has Disney characters that they love and they're stupid fanboys. I think it's <laughs> it's look, there's some there's it's <laughs> some interesting ideas in Kingdom Hearts filled with about three thousand hours worth of terrible execution. Um so I don't care that they're coming on PC. Great, another platform that I never want to play those games on. So I adored Kingdom Hearts 1 as a kid. I played Chain of Memories on the Game Boy Advance. I played Kingdom Hearts 2. It is it is one of the greatest games ever made. Cage 2 is an amazing video game. Then it happened. So so with, with Chain of Memories and Birth by Sleep, you're like, okay, he was told to make games for the new co for the new PlayStation console. That's portable. Whatever, it's fine. Chain of Memories was he wanted to make a card game. I guess whatever, fine. And then he went to Tetsuya Nomura, director of uh, Final Fantasy VII and Kingdom Hearts, uh, went full Tetsuya Nomura and was like, let's make 18 spinoffs. Let's make uh, <laughs> let, 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 let's just start throwing numbers and names and characters and X's and just crap oh everywhere. God. And somewhere in those 14 years, 14 years, we waited between Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3. It all went to shit. Um, and then three came out and I loathe Kingdom Hearts three because the game is mm -hmm. really bad. Uh, the, 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 there's only story in the last two to three hours of the game because Disney, this is not numerous fault. Disney was like, hey, you got to separate out that Final Fantasy stuff from Disney. You can't you can't cross pollinate anymore. Not allowed. Um, outside of like the, the core characters of like uh, Donald Goofy and Mickey, like everyone else is like, no, you can't you can't have like cloud strife show up in big hero six Wait, goofy's not. a disney character gorge i no, thought he was from a, smash he's from, he's from the hidden uh, video game smash, super smash brothers ultimate uh it's where he debuted oh, <laughs> oh my God. i hate this bit I'm sorry. sorry um anyway uh kingdom Hearts 3 is a terrible game that does not have an ending after you waited 14 years for an ending and then has the audacity to say hey pay me 30 more dollars for a dlc that allegedly fixes the oh. ending and then actually doesn't it instead of tying up loose strings just gives you more just gives <gasps> i you love string bundles of string <laughs> um, that being said 
uh yes these games are finally coming to coming to pc where at least at least one thing that is good anytime anything that comes to pc it will live here permanently it'll be in a permanently playable state that's great o- that's okami true. finally hey, got this after years and deserved it yes hey, ian do you think kingdom hearts hd 2.8 final chapter uh includes the game kingdom hearts 2 i don't think it does correct it, the answer is it's not yes. it does not which is stupid also 2.5 and 0.2 do not add up to 2.8 what is this evangelion math <laughs> I mean, come on uh, and, uh, no, 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 nomura and the guy behind evangelion went to the same like math school i swear yeah um anyway oh. i did this whole bit to just so i could uh, get away with doing this i'm gonna read you the name of every single kingdom hearts game in release order no <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts 2, Kingdom Hearts Re-Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts okay. Coded, Kingdom I'm Hearts 358, Days Over 2. Oh, no, now I'm out. <laughs> now I'm out. <laughs> I'm uh, in. Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, which means which is a phrase that means nothing. Kingdom Hearts Recoded. So we've had co- Chain of Memories and then Re-Chain of Memories and then Coded and then Recoded. Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. That's 3D for the 3DS. Uh, Kingdom Hearts uh, Key, which is the the it's an X, but it's the it's the it's the symbol. Oh, it's so, a key. Yes, yeah. and then and then Kingdom Hearts Union Key, or Union Key Unchained, or Unchained Key. These are all different versions of the same thing. Um, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Remix, Kingdom Hearts 2.5 Remix, Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. Which includes. <laughs> hold on, I need to get the name. Final the chapter name. prologue. Uh, <laughs> by, by the way, final final chapter prologue, which is the, which assuming that means three is the final chapter. Three is not the final chapter, so that's great. Um, King, which sorry sorry prologue, which in, which includes Dream Drop uh-huh. Distance HD version, Kingdom Hearts zero point two colon Birth by Sleep. Oh, dash. that makes two point eight plus zero point two. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> yes, but yes, but there's no two or point eight included in two point eight. It's just zero point oh. two. Oh my god! Oh. Um, and uh, sorry, I want to get the full name here. Kingdom Hearts zero point two birth by colon birth by sleep dash a fragmentary passage. Kingdom Hearts key back cover. That is a, oh, that is the name of the thing. God. Kingdom Hearts three. Uh, Kingdom Hearts Union Cross Dark Road. Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. That's the, that's the new uh, uh, rhythm game that just came out. And of course, Kingdom Hearts 3 dash re colon mine. Mm. I just I just want to end this segment by telling you both my favorite hated part of Kingdom Hearts 3 and literally the moment when I stopped playing the game forever um, was when long story short, there's a cutscene where somebody has to describe to Mickey what a VPN is and how he's going to use that to remote desktop into somebody else's computer to handle the files that they need to do. And it's just a five minute long cutscene, And it's like, why are you talking? And like, they're literally talking about VPNs tunneling across networks. That is not an analogy. That is exactly what they're talking about in this um, five minute cutscene. The Ugh. The best thing about Kingdom Hearts that encapsulates what that franchise is as a whole. It takes place in Kingdom Hearts 2. There is, of course, the cutscene where Goofy dies famously. Um, which I show I show well the first time of the day, but there is <laughs> this is not hyperbole. You can book this up. There is a three minute cutscene. I think it's two minutes thirty five seconds of a man walking down a staircase. No dialogue, nothing else. <laughs> it is a man walking down a staircase. It is at least two minutes long. I believe it is closer to three. Oh my god, I it's hate this just too much. I, y'all. Of these games, I would consider. No, will do not. I did that. It was called Kingdom Hearts Three. No, no, so oh, I'm just saying. Kingdom Hearts. I would consider game. purchasing and playing on my own time the Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 remix butthole. I, I think they're on Game Pass, aren't they? I would. Uh, at least three is. Oh, maybe. But I oh, would maybe. 100% consider that because what I've been told they're very good games poorly. and all that Two sort of stuff. Fantastic. I don't need any of the other bullshit. I don't need you don't. You three. Don't. You don't. I can assure you that you do not. I just want to play them. I would spend money to play them. I'm not streaming them at all or v- recording them. I'm just okay. sitting naked, playing them. <laughs> in <laughs> my, in goofy. my in, with, with my Mickey ears on. <laughs> the way with my, God intended. my goofy dong so warmer. You- so um, oh. on Game Pass is 
eight Kingdom Hearts games, including one and two. One at one point five and two point five remix. Right. Kingdom Hearts Final Mix and Kingdom yeah. Hearts Two Final Mix are oh, in it, as well as those Kingdom Hearts Three. Okay, what, where's my three five eight days over two? <laughs> that is in here as well. Oh, it is will, also in there. No. Will will no no no. It's not in there. It's the it's the cutscenes only version of that, which I would recommend oh. because that game is one of the longest video games I've ever played. And you have to do like so many bullcrap missions just to get to the individual cutscene. Story in that game, very good. Everything else, an existential nightmare. <laughs> and that's Kingdom Jeez. Hearts, baby. I hate this. I oh hate everything. God. We're moving on. We're moving on. Uh, moving on to another one of Ian's favorite topics, which is can you guess, Ian? War crimes. War <laughs> crimes. No, it's Terraria. Ian oh, loves God. Terraria. Terraria, oh, one of the best God. games I've ever played um is not is no longer coming to stadia folks i am so sorry all my stadium stadia pro members out there that you can no longer play this my stadium. Uh, um so basically what happened is andrew sprinks uh who works for he's a co-creator of terraria he got on a little twitter rant and then canceled terraria one of the best-selling games of all time uh 30 million copies sold more than skyrim sold more than skyrim and he was so frustrated with google that he canceled it for stadia uh apparently he was locked out of his google account couldn't get back in for three weeks lost access to uh this is a quote from him or his tweet thousands of dollars of apps on his phone oh, why did you click on the tweet uh he had just bought Lotor 4K. Shout out to Lotor 4K. Uh, all his Google Drive data is gone. They so this all stemmed from, I believe they he tried to post on their YouTube account, and it was disabled, and so it mm -hmm. just wiped the YouTube account and then wiped the associated Google account. That is what allegedly happened. Um, so then his final tweet is, I absolutely have not done anything to violate your terms of service, so I can take this as no other way than you deciding to burn this bridge. Consider it burned. Terraria for Google Stadia is canceled. My company will no longer support any of your platforms moving forward. You know what, Google? You suck sometimes. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, this, a part of me is like, you know what? This is like probably not a targeted incident, and it was just something gone wrong and he got really upset about it to the point yeah. where he decided to basically cancel a business relationship because of the personal relationship went wrong. But at the same time, as somebody who has dealt with Google's terrible customer service on multiple occasions, yes. both personally and for the subpixel business account, it's real bad. And I can absolutely see somebody going, if this is how you're treating me now, how, how can I expect you to treat me any better when I am officially a business partner in business with you? um especially so just someone that prominent I this, yeah it's i love it I, I love it he put him on blast he's like yeah. look your customer service sucks so bad that i'm gonna take money away from you this is all i, I have i have the platform and money to say fuck google <laughs> sorry um but I, I, I'm, I'm i'm going i'm going to do it and here's the thing you can't stop me because you already took away all my google powers and yeah. you can't take my twitter away and you can't have my video game so <laughs> Chris, I, I think it's acceptable to say fuck Google. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, back to streaming on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. It's just, man. Google is like, they do some great things. They've got some great free stuff. But man, they just do not make customer service good or easy at all. Oh, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. Bring back Google Glass. Uh, speaking of free stuff, anyone want to talk about what Unreal Engine's doing? Not really. I'll, I'll, I'll hit it real fast. Uh, Unreal Engine is releasing the Meta Human Project. Terrible name, by the way. Meta Human, which is a free-to-use browser-based uh, character creator that makes uh, basically semi-realistic uh, humans in uh, your browser that look like 3D models that could fit into a video game, which you can then, I believe, drag right into Unreal. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, people will make some absolute monstrosities with this, and more importantly, people will find a way to use this for source source fil source maker film porn. Sexy times. Uh, I think there's a stream in the future. Whenever this comes out, assuming we can get easy access to it, uh, yeah. we will definitely be streaming and playing around with this. Oh, we should try to make each other. <gasps> yeah, that's a good one. That's a great idea, and then we can make them kiss. Uh, can great, make a perfect man, <laughs> Ian Gibson. 
<laughs> I was gonna say, well, what's, your, what's your kid's name again? We and Crimson. We and Crimson. We and Crimson. <laughs> I had to think for a second. I was like, oh, we have a kid. <laughs> Which kid? <laughs> <laughs> Which kid? Um. Okay. Uh. Thank you for taking taking the the fall on that one, Chris. Uh. All blames go to Chris. Um. Ian. Anything I, I'll else? Pick the next news. Yeah, I, I'm going to talk about Next this news. E3 Oh, thing. fine. Don't let me host. Don't let me pass it I, over to you. I, uh, uh, look, I step up when you step back. Uh, uh, <laughs> so what you said last night. I'm actually, actually, actually going to read this. With on it? <laughs> I'm going to read this live. E3 pushes forward with plans for a digital 2021 oh event. Um, I, I know E3 gets a lot of flack. They've been kind of bouncing all over the place. They had to cancel 2020 because of COVID, but it looked like they weren't lining up well anyways. Sony had ditched them. Uh, a bunch of other publishers had ditched them. They were not in a good shape, but I think this is a great idea. And here's why I think it's a great idea. Because 2020 summer of games, as uh, journalist James Grubb, it's not Jeff Grubb called Jeff it. Grubb. I was at like 110% and then I went down to 0% Steam. <laughs> Just hit a wall. James Grubb. Last year was awful. Last summer was awful. There was just all sorts of like drip drop press releases whenever they came out, spread out over like four months. And the On great thing text. about E3, yeah, it was just terrible. So the great thing about E3 is that as as bad as that show can be, as as more much of an overload as it can be, it condenses all that news into like a three, four, five, six day event where it's just like, boom, get all your big news out right now. Because if you don't, your competitor is. So like all that Microsoft, Sony drip drop of next gen consoles, they would have had to both come out and hit hard at E3 or at least in that same time frame. Otherwise, they would have looked weak compared to the other. But because they got the drip drop over months and months, it was it was ridiculous. So I really appreciate E3 coming back and trying to coalesce the industry. I just wish that they could get their format down into a better, more manageable method. Yeah. I mean, the benefit of E3 and Summer Games was last year is like it gives a focal point for the games industry to be like, this is your time slot to get your to get your, your crap in. Otherwise, like people are going to go like, oh, how come they didn't have a thing at E3 this year? They must not have it. The game must not be ready. That, that's yeah. the classic. Like, yeah, when we we don't see trailers of the game awards, we know God of War 2 not coming out yet. Breath of the Wild 2 not coming out yet, even though they do directs, yeah. but whatever. Yeah, um, I, I'm thing excited. Is, most of these, like, you know, Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft, they can do whatever they want. They can go do their own show, no problem. But for the, the like, middle-level developers, and, they, of course, small indie devs, like, basically, that's their one time to step out of the sun and be like, this is what we have. All eyes are focused in this direction. If I hold my sign up and wave it around, someone's bound to catch it right now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That being said, I don't think it's going to work out because e, E3 is poorly managed. But, hey, here's hoping. Come yeah, on, Reggie. I think they could just... If they is there, could just... Um, wasn't he at one point? I don't think so. He's, he works for GameStop now and can't sell pizza. Who is there? Was someone on the board for it last year? I think maybe, maybe it's not Reggie. On the ESA board. Mm -hmm. Anyways, yeah, I think um, I, I think like you said, even if they can't get pick publishers on board, as long as it's still a big enough event that you know, like like EA, Sony, and Activision have not been around E3 for the last several years. But they they still do, with the exception of Sony in 2019, I believe, they still do big press events around that week because they're yeah. not part of E3, but they still want to get in on that buzz. So even if the E3 event is bad, I still think it's going to be big enough to at least encourage a big news dump around that time, which is really yeah. what I want rather than a three, four month trickle. That's what we care about anyway at the end of the day. Exactly. Yep. Give us that hype. This is like our Super Bowl. We want to celebrate video games as a medium and get excited for the future. And that's what E3 does. Get drunk. Uh, great. Yeah, looking forward to... <laughs> looking forward to... Shut up. Stand back well right at the end. Uh... You step, back, step up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to mute you. Uh, okay, I'll take one now. Uh, guys, hit yeah. video game anthem. What happened? It sucked. We'll what are they going to do about right? it? They're going to try to fix it. Or not. Or not, because that clock might have run out. There was a rumor coming out of EA that this week, Electronic Arts is holding a meeting to decide whether or not they want to continue to try to revive the failed online game Anthem. Boy, was I looking forward... To, well, actually, prior to this, I was looking forward to Mass Effect Andromeda. And when that sucked, I was very much looking forward to Anthem as someone who played a lot of Division, played a lot of Destiny and destiny 2 uh very much looking forward to anthem and 
wasn't wasn't Bad. good. Wasn't good. Um, the signs were there probably, but you thought, man, this is Bioware's last shot to really shoot it, and they <laughs> phrasing, but go on. certainly didn't shoot their shot. Um, I mean, it looked good ish, and the concepts yeah. were there, and the uh, it honestly, like it potential, certainly. the like the lore stuff that came out of that was really cool. The rap song is very Techno- good. Uh, I knew, I knew you were gonna reference it, that terrible song. Technology. Technology. <laughs> It's the anthem of creation, everybody. Um, yeah, and the robots and the robots look cool, but boy, you guys had mentioned this. I was watching a bit of the around the monitor uh, of buying that game to do a final stream of, depending on <laughs> EA's decision. And and I was just runs out. just furiously typing. It's not even worth that. Like, I, I, it would take no, you it's like it's on um it's on Game Pass because it's pretty oh it is on I Game know. Pass. I Maybe we should do that. I. I it's got to take a bit to get together, though. I, I, I there's from no watching, way. Uh, uh, critical uh, Penguin Zero um, try to like do that game like a couple months ago for the for the bit of like, hey, Anthem is dead. Uh, it took them like forty five minutes to actually all get in the lobby to do a thing. Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, it Oof. it takes a lot to turn around a game. Like, there's success stories of like No Man's Sky and Final Fantasy fourteen, but those games didn't it's- go dark for a year. Yeah, plus those games, they they had they had their promoters. They had their small, tight knit community that that still really enjoyed playing the game. Anthem doesn't have that. They should have taken this game out back years ago and shot it in the head. This game's done. It's done. Stop wasting time yeah. and money on it. Move on to something else, or better yet, just shutter the whole studio. Bioware's done. They're never coming back <laughs> from all these failures. Just As a the guy, the guy who's been doing like the weekly patch notes and everything for Anthem is just like, how do I still have a job? <laughs> um, he's just he like, he's like, like any day, any day now, honey. He's just texting in the patch notes every week. It's like this. Honestly, this is one of those rare instances in which I want EA to do what EA does best, which is kill a studio. Just get rid of Bioware. <laughs> I, I really think they do because there's like you mentioned after like Andromeda, after Anthem. It's just, it's not after the, even Mass Effect 3 was a little bit debacle for them. It's just, get rid of them. I don't know. They, they, they need a hard if restart. If Dawn Gate, uh, the only game that they had a small studio work on that actually had a chance in hell of doing anything, they can kill this. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about? It's getting, uh, it's, oh, Pat, we're past the hour mark. So uh, um, Ratchet and Clank got a release date. It's June 11th. I'm excited. Yeah, as so someone did, who um, owns a PS5 now, excited. Yeah, so I'm Sonic moderately Ed worried Ed. about what the internet's going to do to that female Lombax. But other than that, excited Ooh, about the game. I'm excited about that now. <laughs> um, awesome. Uh, uh, there was the we didn't touch on this, but the because so many people talked about the CD Projekt Red being hacked. Apparently. Uh, some it's people, funny, but it's bad also people dumb. got in there, stole the code, sold it for seven million on the dark web. Seven uh, mil. That's a lot of money. And sweet, um, sweet Dogecoin. Now, before before we call it quits for tonight, folks, we actually got some mail from what? Jesus or a disciple of Jesus, folks. I have received another letter from the good folks at the Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, <laughs> This is the third letter I've received since living here. Um, oh and the fourth goodness. letter we've read on a stream. Um, <clears throat> this came... Uh, so I'm just going to read this. It's very heartfelt. We take this very seriously, Chris. Um, so please, no laughing. Dear William, My name is Mary. I'm writing to you today to share a unique Bible message. Today, it appears that every time we read the news, it's worse than the day before. Do you feel that way sometimes? No. Okay. Who is causing all these bad things to happen? Sorry. Oh no. Oh no. I don't like where this is going. We I don't are, like where this oh is going one bit. We are given the answer in the Bible in first John five nineteen, where it says, The evil one controls the whole world. I have enclosed a tract that explains what the devil is doing and what God's plans are for intervening. For more information on this topic, please visit. I'm not plugging right. your website. <laughs> I, I thought that was about to get racist real quick, and I was about <laughs> to abandon Chip. I hope you and your family are well and safe. Karen, are you safe and well? She guesses. Thank you. She doesn't even sign it, Mary. Uh, yeah, so Mary. there's a tract here. Uh, guys, who really controls the world? 
Jehovah. Oh yeah, the back of the letter is is adorable. There's little little foxes and stuff. Oh, that is oh, really nice. nice. Very cute. I won't Stay show there. I won't show my uh, address Address. on stream again uh it's one no, never mind. <laughs> um anyways i think that's the devil controlling the world um Why is he just like a karen a says she thinks looks, it's the jews which kind of looks like god honestly it looks like a, no a but he's way too god. look how evil this priest looks Can you see that he looks so oh. evil like a... looks like he's casting a spell i'm god. coming for you Anyways, um, Sith Lightning. God wants you to come, so come. Folks, thank you for tuning into Local Chat. <laughs> this has been our Jesus. sixth episode. Um, it, I think it's going pretty well. What do you guys think? I mean, I've been, I've been on it twice, so I clearly don't hate it. Yeah, how do you think the show's going? Not the devil that controls the world. <laughs> I think He's the show's great. going great. I think, I think it's very entertaining, and it gives us a space to talk about the news, talk about games we've been playing every single week. I think it's going great. I think it's going great too. Uh, I'm gonna kick off with some of the uh, outro music here. Oh, man, my back got really sweaty. Um, you didn't need These to know that, but I heavy. had to tell you that, folks. Thank you for tuning in. This has been Local Chat. It's a games podcast or talk show, as Ian likes to say, which I kind of like that even better. You can find all of our great content subpixelfilms.com that'll be straight to our YouTube channel. This very channel where you can check out past episodes of Local Chat. You can check out my Chrono Trigger series. You can check Ian's cool videos. You can check out our weekly live streams. All that sort of stuff is archived here. If you want to see more of Chris, you can find him on Twitter at SaveDataChris or you can find his channel stuff at SaveDataTeam. They're on Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, um, all sorts of great stuff. They do, some, they do a show right before us at 7.30 uh, called Around the Monitor. They also do some other great casts, so definitely check them out. They have way more subscribers than us now, and it kind of sucks. Uh, you can find Ian stuff <laughs> on Twitter at Think Gibson. Uh, Ian, anything you want to plug? Yeah. Um, uh, Jake put up a video this past Monday about his uh, history with turn-based uh, strategy games. Uh, definitely go take a look. It's nice and nostalgic. Awesome. Uh, my name is Will. You can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. Um, I have been playing video games. Uh, tune in on Saturday at some point. We're not sure when. We're going to be playing more Brothers in SWAT, trying to get more serial killers and kill them serially. Uh, looking forward to that. And then, of course, join us next week at 9 p.m. Eastern from Local Chat, Episode 7. Until then. Have a lovely evening, and we will see you next week. Bye. Local chat.